Well, welcome everybody. Those of you uh, that don't know me. I am Dr. Myatt. I am the program uh, chair for the Entertainment Technologies Department. We have two arms of an AAS degree here at the college. One is our video and digital media, and one is our sound recording and engineering degree. Both are AAS degrees, and both have a two plus two partnership with Rowan University. So if you were to come and do your pathway to the video and digital media degree, you could transfer to Rowan University to their communications program in their production specialization. And then if you take the sound and recording engineering AAS degree, you would then transfer directly to their music college um, and get a bachelor's in their music tech uh, program. So if you want any more information about that, you can certainly feel free to email me um, or come up and speak to me after uh, today's event. Um, also, I wanted to thank our Career and Experiential Learning Center here uh, at RCBC, and they are located across the way in the Big Glass Rowan uh, building. And I want to thank Erica Franklin and Deborah Klokas coming here today to also welcome us with this event. And I just wanted to give them a few minutes to share um, some of the great programs and things that they do over there that you may not know that they do. So I'll just have Deborah come on up and share really quickly. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having us. We're very grateful to be partnering on this special morning. Um, so Erica had passed around a handout for you all. So if you're not familiar with some of the programs that we offer, we have QR codes linking you to our resources so you can find them easily on our website. We are over in the Student Success Center in the, on the first floor near the Public Safety Office. So you're welcome to stop by for drop-in hours. Um, or go on to Handshake and schedule an appointment with one of the career advisors. We do have some upcoming programs for you, um, which are also, pro um, I'm sorry, publicized on Handshake, so you can find the details there. Tomorrow we're doing a Prepare for the Fair event with the Career Closet. So if you're looking to come to the Spring Job and Internship Fair, join us tomorrow in Voda Hall. You can pick out an outfit for the career fair through the career closet and get some tips for that event. On Wednesday or Thursday, we're doing a yoga in the SSC. It's chair yoga, so no worries. You don't have to get on the floor and do lots of things. Uh, but that's just to be mindful and relaxed as you're going into this job and internship search. And then join us on Wednesday, March 20th for the job and internship fair, which is also in the SSC. So we'll look forward to um, sharing in the program this morning and seeing you all throughout the spring semester. So thank you again. All right. Well, yeah, we do have a little, a small little group here, but um, I think no matter how large the group is, you are definitely uh, ready for anything. And I'm so happy uh, that Kathy came to speak to us today. Um, and we're going to be kind of talking about career preparation, networking, um, resume building, um, I think all the things that are really, um, I think, thrown by the wayside with a lot of people that don't really know how to do that. that it, it is an art form to know how to prepare and to break into this industry specifically, but in all industries. So I wanted to thank Kathy for joining us today. I'm going to give her the mic, and we're just going to start casually chatting about coffee and career talk. We have coffee. We have some Danish. Please help yourself. And without further ado, Kathy Orr, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Good morning. Would anybody like to get a bottle of water or a snack before we start? Don't be shy. I might get one myself. Um, my name is Kathy Orr. I've lived in Burlington County for 21 years. Um, I'm originally from upstate New York. I'm from Syracuse, um, big basketball fan. And uh, I've worked at three television stations in Philadelphia. I've been here 25 years working in television as a meteorologist. Um, so I started my career because I wanted to be a sportscaster. 
So I went to Syracuse University because I'm from Syracuse. I didn't. I applied to one school because it was the only school that was close by. Because back in the day, you just went to the school in your neighborhood, right? And that's the best thing. Because is everybody from Burlington County? Is that a requirement for school? Okay, everybody's from Burlington County. Because you want to go to school where you're going to work because that's where you're going to make your connections, right? So no matter what you want to do, the same rules apply of getting to where you want to go. Does anybody know what they want to do? Anyone? Idea what you want to do with your career? No? Oh, good. Everybody should be a meteorologist. <laughs> I'll put you on the path. What do you want to do? An actor. Okay, that's exciting. And you're very fortunate because there's probably um, opportunities in New Jersey because I know there's all kind of casting places already and there's plenty in Philadelphia. So all you have to do, we have Google. You know, when I was your age, we didn't have Google. So you had to get in the phone book. Has everybody seen a phone book? And you'd have to look it up and you'd have to look at the number and you'd have to call and you have to hope that they answer. And now you have everything at your fingertips just to Google and figure out what you want to do. And you can take classes to figure out what you want to do. I started off as a kid. I loved sports. Um, so I was fascinated with basketball. I loved basketball. So my father took me to a Syracuse University basketball game, and I was watching the two guys on the court talk about the game. And I said to my dad, I was like 10, and I said, they're getting paid to sit there and just talk about this game? And he said, yeah, that's their job. They're commentators. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So um, in the rest of my preparation as a kid was just like, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I went to school for broadcast journalism. And as I went through school, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do sports. Robin Roberts was the only woman doing sports at the time. And she was phenomenal. She was on ESPN. And later, she went on to Good Morning America. But she was phenomenal. She was just the best. And she was the only woman. And she's still the best. And so I was like, that's what I wanted to do. And then as I got older, through high school, I'm like, oh, I still have television, maybe not sports. And then meteorology just happened. It, there was just happened to be a job at my local TV station where I interned, and they were auditioning for a weather person. And since I interned there, they were starting a new show, and the boss said to me, this job may last five days, five years. We, we don't know, but I'm like, I'll take it. And um, I just worked in the morning for one hour on this morning show doing weather. I didn't even know anything about weather. And I went back to school for meteorology. So I think education is the key. I ended up getting a degree in meteorology while I was working and then went on with my career and just worked hard, worked hard, stayed in my lane, um, wasn't distracted by what everybody else was doing, um, and just kept moving forward in my career um, and just looked for opportunities when they came. And then I worked in my hometown for eight years, and then I came to Philadelphia and just never left. Um, so it's, it's been great, but it's, it's not easy to take those first steps. And the first steps are networking, like, okay, how do I get to where I want to go? How do I start talking to people? And I have two children, well, they're not children anymore, that are your ages. And I was just advising my daughter who... She wants to go to Rutgers Camden um, to go to law school. And there was an open house. So if there's anything you're interested in, and there's an open house, or there's an opportunity to do something like this and listen to a speaker, and they may be in the field that you want to be in. It could be anything. It could be culinary arts. It could be you know learning how to, I don't know. It could be nursing. It could be anything. Um, it could be acting. Uh, but there's always opportunity, so look for those opportunities. I have a story. When Does anybody know what MTV is? Okay. When I was in co college, um, I, I just wanted to live in New York City, and I wanted to work in New York City. So before I embarked on this television career, one of my professors had said to us, if anybody ever wants to work for MTV in New York, let me know. And we're like, oh, okay. That's, that's like a dumb question. So they were coming on campus to audition for a game show. And in my mind, at 19 or at 20, I was like, okay, if I just get an audition, 
get on that game show that gets me to New York. It gets me to talk to people. It gets me to a job there. And that's exactly what I did. I auditioned to be on the game show. I got on the game show. It got me to New York. Um, and then I had contacts through that professor that I just kept calling, calling, calling. Is there anything going on? Is there anything going on? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? And then when I was down there on that game show, which I lost, by the way, lost out on the trip to Jamaica, and but kept calling my contacts, they were like, wait a minute. And they put me on hold, and they came. the person came back, and they're like, yes, we have a job. It's for two weeks on a show called, it's Nickelodeon, it's called Family Double Dare, and you have a two-week job uh, on the show. So I graduated from college. I'm like, Mom, I'm going to New York. I'm going to go. Be She's like, what? Um, and I went down. I, I stayed with a friend, that an older family friend that lived down there, went on the show, um, started working, and then they liked me after the two weeks, so then they offered me another job, and then they offered me another job. I ended up being in New York two years on these freelance jobs, but does anybody know what freelance is? Raise your hand if you know what freelance is. What's freelance? Um, it's like not a set like position in a place, but like they hire you from gig to gig. Yes, it's gig. So I got gig to gig with show to show. And so then I had unemployment. So I had to get on the train and go to Jersey City and pick up my unemployment check. I had to sleep on my friend's couch because that's what I did for two years because I couldn't afford rent because they didn't pay me that much. But then that led me to other things I did in New York. I took a commercial acting class in my free time because I thought that would be fun. And then when I had the opportunity to get the weather job back in central New York, they auditioned for the weather job. And I had just taken an auditioning class in New York. You don't audition for TV broadcasting jobs. You usually have a tape. You send them their tape. It was an audition. I'm like, thank you, God. Because I was like, look at how this all fell into place. And I had a plan. It was a kooky plan. But I actually did what I thought I was going to do. So look at, look at a wider scope of what you're interested in. It could be anything. But try to put the pieces together to get you where you want to go. Does this make sense? It may be crazy, and but you don't know what you can do until you start down the path, and then all the stars start aligning, and you get to match the dots to your path. Um, and it works, and it worked for me, and it worked for other people, but it sent me, and then years later, in my broadcasting career, I had an opportunity to go back to New York and to work for WABC. And um, I didn't go because I was newly married. I had just moved into my first house, but the opportunity came. And I always thought that it was going to take so long to get there broadcasting-wise that I wanted to do it right after college, and that's why I pursued it in that way. Because um, I always knew you have to work in a small town, and then you have to go to a bigger town, and I thought I will never get to New York if I wait. But I did have the opportunity to go back, and I decided instead to come to Philadelphia. I thought it was um, a, a better community. It was more like neighborhoods. I was familiar with the Jersey Shore. My family used to go down for years when we were kids, even though it was like an eight-hour drive. So this area was um, where I felt like I wanted to settle and um, raise a family. So I've been here ever since. Um, but it's, it's very exciting. And in anything that you do, you can make it exciting because you're very close to a major metropolitan area. In Philadelphia, I commute. Sometimes I go back and forth twice a day. I put a lot of miles on. Um, and we have everything that you need there, and we have everything in New Jersey too. But we are in such a great area that if you want to get involved in sports, we have professional teams. We have local teams. We have, you know, in Trenton, we have baseball. We have, I mean, it's everywhere. So there's so many opportunities but you, all you have to do is call or email and say, you know, I'm interested in this. And don't be afraid to call human resources of the Phillies or of the Eagles and say, listen, I'm trying to be interested in how I would get an internship. Or, you know, I'm trying to think of the acting school, Heery, H-E-E-R-Y. They're the ones they're casting in Philadelphia. Um, so just Google casting directors. Philadelphia. They might need extras. You could do it now. So there's all kinds of things that you can start now. Who has Instagram? Okay. Are you on it like a lot? Yeah. 
course you are, because we all are. I, I do it for work, but if you find something that you're interested in, pay attention to what, who you're following, right? If you don't know what you want to do, are you interested in fashion? Are you interested in decorating? Are you interested in the arts? You know, if you're trying to figure out what do I want to do with my life, right? What do, what do I like? What is my passion? You know, how can I make this into something that can be a career? And sometimes maybe it's not. Maybe you're going to have to go into a different path to support yourself, but then what you love could be something, a hobby. You know, they always say, turn your passion into your life's work, which would be the ultimate goal. Um, and sometimes we can do that and sometimes we can't. Um, but it's, uh, it's very exciting. And you guys are just at the beginning. So I'm here to tell you that you can do anything you want to do. You just have to put in the time, right? It's just the effort. And it's just seeing that path and reaching out for help. And you can email me. I'll give you my email. Would you like my email? Okay, my email is... It's kathy.or at fox.com. And also, other jobs that you guys do, if you have summer jobs, if you're working now, um, all of those skills that you're experiencing now are going to help in your career as you go through life. If you work in retail, if you work at Chick-fil-A, if, you, you know, if you're a server at a restaurant, um, even if you work you know, in a nursing home helping out, any type of those types of jobs, right? You do a good job. You get a good reference. That takes you a long way. When I had those gigs, those freelance gigs in New York, um, it was all word of mouth. They're like, hey, we like this kid. Oh, would you recommend her for the next gig? Yeah, and that's how I did it for two years. Um, and then afterward, when I was done with all those gigs and I had an opportunity to go back to where I interned to start my real career, um, they invited me to move down to Florida the people at Nickelodeon and MTV, um, to be an associate producer because Universal Studios down there was offering Nickelodeon 11 years of free studio space to go down to Florida. So now that's why it's Universal Studios Nickelodeon down there. They used to be in New York, and everybody moved down there. And I was like, nope, I'm going to pursue what I set out to pursue, and I moved back um, to upstate New York and began that meteorology weather career. And I stayed in it because when I was pursuing it, the Weather Channel was just starting. And women were meteorologists. So when I was in school, while I was working, um, I would drive an hour every day to go to class because there was no online classes at that time. So I would do my morning show in central New York. It was a one hour show. And then I would drive to Oswego, New York, which is like the snow belt to go to class for meteorology, and then i drive back. So I did that for a number of years. Um, and then when I moved to Philly, I finished at Villanova and then just sent all my credits back to my university to get that meteorology degree. So my undergrad was broadcast journalism. Then I worked a couple of years in New York. Then I moved home for my job to start my career in meteorology, and that's when I went back to school. So I was working, doing live hits, running to class, coming back. Um, but I knew that I needed that degree. I knew that people were going to ask me if I had that degree. It was a male-dominated field. Now you see a lot of women doing weather. And um, when I started, there weren't a lot of women. There was, I guess there might be a weekend weather person, um, and it could be a woman. And now you see mainly women um, doing the weather. And as far as meteorologists, you see much more of them as well. When I was in class... I, we had 11 guys, and I was the only woman in meteorology. And they used to ask me, um, and for many early years in my career, people would ask me, well, aren't you intimidated? You're the only woman, and it's all these guys. And I thought, I said, no, it's an opportunity, because I'm the only woman, and there's all these guys. And, and that's what happened. It just grew and grew and grew. And that's why you see Ginger, Ginger Z is one of the most known people on national television, um, and Dillard and Dreyer. Um, so there's always opportunities in every type of career. Um, female dominated for men, men dominated for women. Um, you're in college at a great time um, for opportunity. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Deal with the unknown? That's a great question. 
Um, I always used to say that I was young and dumb um, and took the leap to come to Philadelphia was huge because TV stations don't always keep you that long. It's a contract. So you work contract to contract. So that's scary because when you get a regular job, right? So you get a job at a finance company or you're an accountant and you don't say, oh, I'm only here for three years. Like, oh, I'm only here for five years. That's what my contract says. So there's, you know, you get to year three out of a four-year contract. You're like, oh, I hope they like me. Hope I'm going to stay here because that's how the television business works. So it's very unsettling. Um, But I think in those early years, the unknown, I think it was just um, not thinking about it. And I think there's a lot more pressure on you guys. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like there's a lot more pressure? Um, Like in high school? We got to do the APs, like AP classes are great and all that, but we never had that, so we didn't worry about it. Um, There wasn't that competition. Um, uh, So it was just like, oh, I'm going to go to college, and this is what I want to do, and I'm just going to do it. So there was less thought. It was more like, what do I want to do? The world is my oyster. It wasn't overthinking anything. It was just like, oh, okay, I think I'll do that. And, And it's amazing when you give yourself that freedom what that does, it just opens up the possibilities. So um, I just think it was the lack of um, overthinking and just really focusing on what I wanted, right? So if you're like, okay, I want to go get that job, so what do I do? I tell kids, like, sometimes um, if you don't get into the school that you want, so say you want to go to graduate school, and I have a good friend that came here, did his um, undergrad, then went on, Um, finished his degree, then went on to Penn Law School. Um, And he's just doing great. He graduated from Penn, moved on. But I had another friend that didn't get into the School of the Dreams and, you know, was crushed. And I said, well, wait a minute. If you didn't get in and you really want to go there, then why don't you work and apply again or go to community college and then get your grades up, and then apply, because it's easier as a transfer. There's always a way to do it. Um, And then if if funds are an issue, you know, do your due diligence as far as, you know, aid and stuff like that. And if it still doesn't work, then go somewhere else. But it doesn't mean you're still not going to achieve the dream. You know, it doesn't doesn't really matter, um, in my opinion. You can go to school and just do great work, do great networking. I can't emphasize enough to take advantage of your professors and who they know. Um, We were just talking earlier about all the people that we know and who could be helpful to each other. And everybody's just here to help you. You have all these people at the university that all they want you to do is succeed. Isn't that amazing? That's like so great. You have all the support. So they're here to make sure that you do well. That's their job. And I'm here to tell you that I will help you. If you email me and say, hey, Kathy, I think I want to do this. I think I want to intern at, you know, Penn. Do you know anybody? I'm like, yeah, I do. I know Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike is our doctor on Fox 29. I can ask him. I can get you a name. You call them. You see how you can intern. You know, it's all about talking. It's all about communicating. And the problem is this. This has gotten in our way of talking and communicating, right? So right now we're all looking at each other and we're talking to each other and your phone's up, so you got to put it down. So um, we got to make sure that when we're with people and you have a lunch or you have a breakfast and you're networking, that you put the phone in your purse I was just, I just follow, I follow a great guy, tried it, there's a couple great people on Instagram, so it's awesome, the phone's great, I mean, we all know it, and we love it, but when you're with someone, you put it away so they think, or they know that they are the most important person in your life at that moment, okay, so you're at an interview, you're at lunch, you're either with your bestie, and you put it away, unless there's an emergency that you have to be aware of, but you can put it on ring, Um, so they know that you're paying attention to them. Um, And then, you know, and then you're not distracted. You're not like, oh, i got to check my Instagram. Oh, my Snapchat's beaten, beep in. Because it's going to get in the way of greatness. Because greatness is time. Greatness is focus. Greatness is putting the time in. you got to put the time in. 
There's no shortcut. There is absolutely no shortcut. My daughter always used to say, like the school play, there would be a girl that was never an actress, right? And she would come out of the school play and everybody would say, she came out of nowhere. It's like, no, she didn't. She did dance every day after school. She practiced on YouTube videos in her bedroom. She, you know, she practiced singing. She has some talent. She put the work in and she didn't come out of nowhere. No one comes out of nowhere. Okay, you got to put the time. And if you get the t- if you put in the time, it will happen. Right? Just talk to people. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And it may take you this way and you're like, "Eh, don't want that." Okay. Go this way. And it's not going to happen right away. There is definitely a path of trying to figure it out. Um, I have a good friend whose son had a job, and he's like, um, I want to go, and now I want to um, be a nurse. So it's like, okay, how are we going to do this? Right? So now we have to apply to figure out how we're going to do that. Or, you know, they, another one was like, I want to be a skiing instructor. And the mother was like, oh, my God, like I'm going to have a heart attack. But... Sometimes things just happen, and you find your way back. It's just a process. So don't be too worried. Um, I have a son that's going to go to college next year, and he's trying to figure out where he's going to go. And he's so worried um, about, i got to pick a major. i got to pick a major. I'm like, no, you don't. You know, you can change it. And it, it's okay because you're finding out what you like, and you're finding out what you don't like. Um, and it's, that's what life is. I know people that still don't know what they want to do when they're like 50. So, and they change and you change and what you like changes, right? And so you don't have to be worried about that. It's actually should be fun. This should be fun. Are you having fun? Are you having fun? Yeah. You're fabulous. I can tell. What's your name? Misa, nice to meet you. Um, so does anybody have any other questions? That was a good one. Do you have a question? You look like an intellectual. What's your name? I'm Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Willingboro, New Jersey. Okay. Do you know what you want to do when you grow up? Um, I want to be a mechanical engineer. Cool. Excellent. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, so I believe that in order to achieve something or achieve goals, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations and just put yourself out there. But sometimes it can get hard and start having second thoughts because it may feel too uncomfortable and I want to know like how did you deal with that because I know you probably had second thoughts wow can we give Anthony a round of applause that was a great question because life is all about putting yourself in uncomfortable situations all the time so when I I'll give you a personal story when I was at NBC 10 so when I came to Philadelphia I worked at NBC 10 Um, I worked there for four years And then I went to CBS, I worked there for 13 years, and now I work for Fox, and I've been there for eight years. So I've been at three of the four television stations in Philadelphia and enjoyed every single one. So when I was at NBC, all I wanted to do is fill in on the Today Show. I didn't want to work in New York again. I wanted to stay in Philly. That was a commitment. I had little kids. I was like, nope, I don't want it. I just want to go have fun and dip my toe in that and enjoy it. So I went to my boss, and I was petrified. And I was like, listen, do you have any contacts? Because we were an NBC station. NBC actually owns the station. Fox owns our station. We live in a big enough city that the corporations, the networks, own the stations. So we have a connection with them. So I said, I really want to fill in for Al Roker on the day show. Do you you think I can do it? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll call so-and-so. I think you can do it. So they called me. They're like, yep, you're going up Saturday. I was like, you're going up Friday. They're putting you up in a hotel, and you're going to do it. I was petrified. I'm like, what am I doing? I can't do this. I'm gonna be, I was like hyperventilating. And when you go up there, they treat you so nice. Like they put your coat on for you. They put the microphone on. They hand you the mic. There's no work. There's no heavy lifting. It's just you just go up and talk to people. It's rare. And I'm like, this is great. I can do this. This mail's not going anywhere. So um, I was so scared, but I kept pushing to do it because I knew it was going to make me look better at my station. And it was going to be great for my career because what if I would do want to do this someday? Like, I, this is what I like. I like talking to people. I like interviewing people. It's spilled over in what I do here in Philadelphia because I do a big segment down the shore every summer called Or at the Shore. And it's a whole big group of people. And it's that kind of an atmosphere. And I knew it was going to be good for me. And I was like, this, I'm just, 
you know, I would get knots in my stomach. So an, an old friend used to say to me, when you get really nervous before you do anything, whether it's a speech or whether you have to go in front of people, it's an audition, she would always say, clench your fists so tight that it almost hurts and just let it go. And you'll feel like a release. And I was like, okay, I'm either going to, so my thing in my mind that I used to do, I was like, okay, this is going to happen. I'm going to do this. It's either going to be awful or I'm going to commit that it's going to be great. So I think I'm just going to commit. It's going to be great. And I'm just going to go do it. And I would just put that in my head. Like I have a choice. It's going to happen, right? I've got to, I've got to go on that audition. I've got to go on that interview. So I'm either going to go in great and confident or I'm going to be petrified. Which one would you choose? Which one would you choose? Yeah, I'm, let's just do, just, just do it. And, and that's how I think you get yourself through those. You got to do it. You got to make that phone call. You got to go for that interview. You got to try to get that job. And if you don't, it's okay. There's another one. There's got, there is. Um, but if you don't, you're never going to know. And, and what do they say? Half of success is just showing up. Um, I have a good friend, and my, a lot of my references are television because I've been in it so long. But are you guys familiar with sports? I have a very good friend, Mike Tirico. He did the Super Bowl. He did the Olympics. He's a sports commentator. And he was working in the same TV station as I was, and he was in college at the time. And he was an intern. And so the sports guys all called out sick, and they're like, we have nobody to do sports tonight. They're like, hey, put the kid on. And since it was a smaller television market, they put him on. They're like, oh, my God, he's really good. <laughs> yeah. So then he ended up getting the weekend job while he was in college. And then he worked. They hired him for weekends. And then he took over the main job within two years. And then he went to ESPN by the time he was, like, 25. So it was like this. But if he wasn't there he wouldn't have been noticed and they wouldn't have picked on him. And if he didn't do a great job, then they wouldn't even have, just being a good kid, he was just, can I help you? Can I be helpful? You know, that's half of it too. When you do internships, even if they say, oh, you know, there's not much to do, observe what's going on and say, you know what, I noticed that um, there's a lot of paperwork over there. Can I help you with that? Can I help you file that? Oh, you know, there's extra tables to clean. You know, I'll help somebody else clean up. Put in that extra effort, and it will be noticed. You may not think it, you know, but it will be noticed, and that's what's going to get you um, the edge. And you'll feel good about yourself as well. There's enough room for everyone. That's what one of my colleagues said when I worked in meteorology. He was the main meteorologist when I was an up-and-comer, and they said, hey, there's this, this young girl who's now in the weather game. What do you think? And he was a seasoned veteran. And he said, there's enough room for all of us. And I remembered that. And I said, that's a great way of looking at life and looking at competition. So when you're in the running for the job, and, and there is enough room. And there's also enough room for one more great engineer, for one more great broadcaster, for one more great actor for one more great doctor, for one more great chef. There is definitely room. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because we, we watch television and we see movies, and sometimes, don't you think we've seen it all? And then somebody comes up with another great idea, and you're like, just when you thought there was nothing else great, there is something else to be contri contributed. And that's what your job is, is to be the next great whatever you want to be. Yes. What was the difference in you or I or anyone who knows you? Because growing up in this area, if you or someone in your field has a bad forecast for the weekend, it can make and break a small business at the Jersey Shore. Yeah. yeah. So, so when was that first moment where you realized that what you do on television actually matters to a lot of people in the area? Well, you know what? It happened to me young in my career to notice how the impact of what you can say matters. Um, and it was when I was first starting off in upstate New York and Syracuse, I was at a CBS station and it was a snowstorm. And I was like, 
guys, there's not going to be school tomorrow. I'm like, this storm is whatever. And then the superintendent of like the public schools was like, hey, you can't call school. And I was like, oh my God, you're watching? You know? Um, so then after that, I never called school. Also with the Phillies, like people would be, we were in the World Series and I was forecasting um, and we were the Philly station at the time. And I said, listen, it's going to pour. They're probably not going to play the game. Um, and then they did play the game. And I learned because when people ask me in the future, it's all up to the umpires. So in Major League Baseball, they don't have consulting meteorologists. Like, they don't have their own line. They don't even call the weather service. It's up to the umpire to look at a little radar in the back, kind of like Wizard of Oz, and to say, okay, we can play or not. Isn't that crazy? So the umps call the game until the World Series. And then I don't know who does it then. I can't remember. But, yeah, so I don't call games either. I just always say it's up to the umpire. They'll decide, but here's the weather. Um, and also with the shore, you live and learn, basically. You know, you're going to make mistakes. And you just say, okay, I made a mistake. I'm going to move on. Like, you just, that's life. That's how we learn, right? It's either if you make a mistake, you learn from the mistake, you don't dwell on it, and you just move on. And um, nobody's paying attention, too, because they're all making their mistakes and moving on, right? So don't get bogged down with... Um, this happened, so, oh, no, 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 just, just, that was that day. And in the field that I do, we always say you're only as good as your last broadcast. So if you had a great broadcast, guess what? You get to do it again tomorrow. You know, if you messed up an order, you know, at the restaurant, that's okay because you get another chance when you go back in. So don't worry about that. You just keep moving forward. Um, and to finish answering your question, um, the shore, if we would forecast... Um, rain for a holiday weekend, we're very, very careful about what we say because the establishments would get mad because we, we need people, you know, you guys have so much pull, you know, especially before streaming and on demand, everybody watch TV at the certain time. Everybody would tune in to get the news. Now it's not like that also because of phones, right? But there would be so much influence that they would say, hey, listen, you got to be careful when you start talking about rain. It's like, well, we're not going to, we have to say what's going to happen, but then we couch it with, but go down to the shore anyway. <laughs> they need your money. So um, uh, that's how we work around that. Do you have an establishment down the shore? Oh, yeah, yeah. We love spring. Listen, rain or shine, everybody's going to go anyway. They, they don't, people don't really care anymore, do they? Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great place. Yes, another question. How is that? How do you handle it? That's a good question because that's a nerve-wracking um, experience. I have been on the air during blizzards. I have been on the air in tornadoes. Hurricane Sandy was the first time I ever said tornado on the ground. There was a tornado on the ground in Voorhees. So that had never happened before. So that's like, it's scary. And I think with anything else, what you're going to find when you start working, the older you get, the more experienced you are and the more confident you get. So I'm more, when we just had the Mullica Hill tornadoes, which was awful, I had never seen anything like that on the radar before. And it looked like one continuous tornado. And we're like, is this possible? Because we're not used to forecasting this. This is not Tornado Alley, but we're kind of be beginning to be climatologically a tornado hot zone in New Jersey and into Pennsylvania. So it's, it's scary, scarier when you're younger, but I find that the more educated you are and the more homework you do on particular situations, for me, learning more about tornadoes, learning more about their structure, how they move, that type of thing. So the more knowledge that you have, the more confident you are to do the job when something like that happens. Bless you. Um, and as you get older, you have that experience um, of maturity as well to be able to handle that. Um, and that's why, you know, when you're in a place and you keep doing a particular job, you've seen it before. And, and that's, that's another good lesson that you bring up. With any type of job, if you're a nurse in an emergency room, or you're, if you're a sous chef, or you're if, in the, if you're in the arts, if you're in accounting, or if you're in marketing, you're going to see the same type of situations come up again, and you're going to know how to deal with them easier and more relaxed because you've already seen it. 
Um, in my line of work, we have that chroma, the chroma key, and it's, it's a green screen behind us. People call it the green screen. And we have two TVs on either side. And you're welcome to come visit if you guys can do a field trip. And then I'll show you the whole studio. And that's how we know what we're pointing to, because we see ourselves in t on the TV in relation to a map. Well, I, I worked when I first started, and the TVs, like, lost power. So I didn't know what I was pointing to. I didn't know. I was like, oh, boy, oh, boy. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I just kept talking and kept going like this. And then I went back and looked at the tape. I'm like, that wasn't bad. So a lot of times we'll go through life, and something will happen, and maybe we'll forget a speech or we'll forget somebody's name or well, something simple. And it's just like, if you just relax, like, okay, it's cool. It's just, and you just keep going, you'll later find that no one really noticed. Like, I think we do that to ourselves sometimes. Um, and so things are going to go wrong is my message. But you just have to kind of keep rolling with it and know that it's going to be okay. And sometimes that's hard, but you just have to have confidence that it will be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, what was what was it like for your first broadcast? What were you were you nervous? I thought I was very nervous. What do you think? I, I was, was dying. Yeah, I, the guy who once had my own radio show down at a different college. Yes. It it was pretty nerve wracking. I wanted to know how was it like. It, I see every every time I seen you, especially during the halftime show. Yeah. During the halftime, you guys look you look very confident. How do you keep it up? It's been a long a long time, long time doing it many times a day, right? It's not easy. The first, I'll never forget my first job, which was in Syracuse at the station that I interned at. Remember when I got the job and I went back to school and they were like, okay, figure it out. You know that green screen? They're like, oh, have you done this? No, I haven't done it before, like only in college. Okay, go ahead, you'll be fine. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I would just practice every night. I would be like, okay, this touching here, touching here. I was a nervous wreck. I was probably awful. In fact, the guy I was dating who became my husband was like, I watched you in those first early broadcasts, and it wasn't good. <laughs> but I stuck with it. I didn't stop. I'm like, I don't care. I love it. I'm, I'm not making any money, like no money, but I'm going to still do it. Yep. What do you mean independent? An, an independent journalist like me trying to... Are you trying to do it, like, with your own phone? And with like my own phone, phone and that? What advice do you have for someone like that? Well, you know what? I think if you're going to do that, like, go to the scene yourself. And, and, I mean, I guess you could talk to other people. I Honestly, I would Google independent broadcasters. Yes. They call it digital media now. So, I mean, if you go to a scene, and it's kind of what... Um, Anderson Cooper did. I don't, I don't. You guys probably know Anderson Cooper, but he took like a period of time. It was a year or it was a couple of years, and he just went through Europe um, in the, the world and was just report, file, filing stories. And I think then he went on to CNN, and then he went to um, then he went on to 60 Minutes. So I, I think you, if you're at any scenes and you're doing any kind of digital reporting, you may see other digital reporters there. And there could be a group that do that. There's all kinds of groups you can join and uh, trying to find people that do what you want to do and try to find someone like that. Like, oh, I want to be a fashion designer. Okay, well, who do you admire? You know, where are they? Are they going to be in Philadelphia? Are they going to be around? Do they have a show somewhere that you can network with one of their associates that, you know, is doing something that you want to do? Try to find the people that are doing what you want to do and read about them. Read about their biographies. How did they get there? Um, and you know who along the way helped them? Because just by talking to people and showing up and different venues that you'll be able to meet people, organizations that the school brings in, take advantage of the career center, guest speakers. And even if it's not something you absolutely love, there may be something they say that's like, hmm, I never thought of that, but that could be interesting. And that leads to the next person. When you go on an interview for any kind of job and say you don't get the job, say, okay, but do you have somebody else that I could talk to? And let them give you another person that will lead you to the next person. Does that make sense? Um, when I got that job at Nickelodeon, my professor said, does anybody ever want to work at MTV? And I was like, yeah, 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 I do, I do. And she gave me a name 
But I kept working that name, that, that guy. His name was Chris Viscardi. I probably drove him nuts. He was working at Nickelodeon, and I just kept calling him, Hi, Chris. I So-and-so gave me your number, and I'm looking for, remember, there are no phones, no cell phones, so it was all calling by phone, leaving messages. I'll call you again. Is anything going on? I, I, I worked that contact for about a year until I was down in New York on that game show. I happened to call him, and he happened to hear something. So a lot of it's timing, but it's your persistence that's going to kind of hit at the right time. Does that make sense? Yes. Hi. One, I want to thank you so much for coming. Two, want to see how your higher education um, professors added to your career, and if you're thinking about eventually moving your career into higher ed to oh. support. Oh, yeah, I would love to. I always thought that I would end up teaching. Okay. Yeah, I always thought that that was going to be what I would end up doing. Um, so yes to that question. Um, it's great to be here because I love helping students find their way because I think that not everybody has a vision. And I'm, I've helped so many of our interns, um, and they keep calling us, like, hey, I got this job offer. Hey, what I should do? And through the thought process of what's important to you, you know, when you get a job, is it that you're fulfilled, you know, the money will come. I always said, because I didn't, guys, I, my first paycheck was so low, you'd cry. Um, and, but I, I lived at home. Um, I didn't have a car. Um, my sister let me borrow her car because I was just pursuing what I really wanted to pursue. And then as I perfected my skill, then I earned more and more in the way of income. Um, and not all careers are like that, for sure. But your question started with um, professors and how the professors helped. That one professor, um, her name was Christine Davidson, and she was the one that said, hey, does anybody want to ever work in New York? She was, a, she was one of CNN's first anchors when it started. And some of the ladies in the room, if you're probably over 40, you might remember when CNN Headline News started, and it was Bobby Batista, and this Christine Davidson was another one. She was my professor. She was so instrumental in my future um, that she was just like, when I did my first live broadcast or my first um, practice in college, whatever she said, like, I just took to heart. Like, it, it, it was, she was just totally my mentor. And we never said it, but I always knew it, and she always believed in me. So I always knew that I could do what I wanted to do, even though in this career, people would say to me, it's so competitive. My mother was so afraid I was not going to get a job in broadcasting that she said, you need to take a marketing major too. You have to have a backup because this may not work. And I was just like, oh, are you serious? Like, it is going to work. But even my mom, like, she was petrified because it was so saturated at the time. But like I said, there's always room for one more. And my professors made me believe that. And they were there for me. So she was the one that was extremely instrumental. And then this graduate assistant opened the door for that first job. And that's how I started on my New York path. But then my internship was what brought me back to start my television career. So there's all these people in your life. You know, there's the news director of that station that was instrumental. It was the professor. It was the graduate assistant. So... In all my um, teachers, their resources, because you guys have to remember this, the people that are teaching you were most likely in the field, and they were in the fields that you want to be in. So they've already been there and done that and know the people, so you have to tap into them to say, hey, do you know anybody that does this? Do you know anybody that does this? Do you have a friend? Because we've been around a little while. We know some people, right, in our own careers, and we can help you, guide you. And we've been around in general. And with time, there's wisdom. Um, and I try to tell my own, I'm telling my daughter, is there an open event? Go to the open house. So she did. So she goes to Rutgers to the open house, and she finds out all these wonderful things that they offer. And then she comes back, and she's so excited by just making that one move. So by coming here today, you made the move. It's one out of many moves that you're going to make over the next couple of years that's going to lead you to the next thing. And I can't wait to see what you do. I'm very excited to see the things that you do and the things that you accomplish, um, just knowing 
you have to take those steps and you have to do the things that make you feel uncomfortable. That's how you get ahead. Um, and, you, and you definitely have the tools to do it and you have the support to do it. And that's the most important thing. <laughs> Yay, thanks for coming. All right. Any other car? Are you guys ready to take over the world? Who's ready to take over the world? Are you? Okay, you ready? Are you ready? You're going to, I can tell. You're just being shy today. Yes, you have a question? Well, I just wanted to follow up with um, earlier talking. You've, you know, you've experienced, you, you talked about thinking out of the box. You talked about networking. You talked about doing things that you don't want to do. It sounds very similar to when I have my students come and say, I'm looking for an internship. How do I find an internship? Who do I call? What do I do? I also love that you talked about cell phones, putting them down. Um, any tips or tricks for the local area for these students to find an internship or tips and tricks on how to do that first reach out? Sure, absolutely. Um, so is anyone, okay, let's, let's first see who's a freshman. Who's a freshman? Okay. I like your hair. Who's a sophomore? Okay. And do we have juniors? Oh, juniors? Junior, junior, upperclassmen. And do we have seniors? You're a senior. Okay. So if you, when you're a freshman, you're thinking about this summer, right? If you're a sophomore, you're thinking about this summer. If you're a junior, you're thinking about this summer before senior year. Senior year, you're looking ahead for positions, right? So if you're the freshman and sophomore and the junior, um, right now it's February. So does anybody have anything in the works for summer? Any internships? You do? Internship? Awesome. Where are you going to be interning? I'm not doing it now. They're just, I'm just extending it to uh, fall or allied global marketing. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Internships are so important because if they like you and you've been there a while, you're extending the internships, a lot of times they're just going to hire you. Um, I was just talking to a coworker whose daughter interned at Subaru, and she found it on her own. She just started Googling marketing and she, it's very close, it's in Camden. Then he told me they hired her to work during school and they, she kept working during school so she'd get paid and she had time to go to school. And then she had like a lease for a very small amount a month. They paid for her car insurance and if she needed any work done on the car, she would go up to the front desk and say, here are the keys and they go do the work for the car. I'm like, are you kidding me? I wanna work for Subaru. So that's in our backyard. So if anybody has interest in cars, I, I think I love cars. I think cars are so cool. Um, but any of that, being local, like what's important to you? Local, I want to stay near home. I want to stay near my family, okay? Local, um, you don't even have to cross the bridge, so you don't even have to pay for easy pass. Great company. Oh, and they have pensions. Has anybody heard of a pension? Do you know what a pension is? Yes, when people are in retirement, they get paid every month. Back in the day, big banks did it, big companies did it. They got rid of it because it cost so much money. And they do it at Subaru, which means you're not thinking about old age now. But let me tell you, it comes quick. So they will put money aside for you. So aside from all the money you save, all your investments, when you get that big job, all the money that um, the government will give you, hopefully there'll be some Social Security. They give you, give you extra money just because you work there. It's amazing. It's a bonus, and you don't hear about it anymore. So um, that's what a pension is. They give you money every month. doesn't go away, and you have it forever. So, um, so we have great companies in the area. So to answer Rick's question, and for the internship, if there's anything you're interested in, is it marketing? But what do you like? Do you like cars? You want to try to – you've got a home office of a major car manufacturer in Camden. It's right there. Campbell Soup headquarters right there in Camden. Um, what else do we have? Sports. We have all the sports facilities. The biggest thing I can tell you guys is start ahead. So say you have a summer job this year, you're a freshman going into the sophomore year. Okay. Work wherever you can to make money. Work this summer. But start networking those internships now and maybe even for next summer or the fall. 
but Google the company's internships. If you don't see any internship, call Human Resources. Everything's online. You can get to anyone. Leave a voicemail. Um, and then they're so close. If you have a car, does every, everybody have transportation? Um, you could drive, walk in the front door of BMW, of Mount Laurel or whatever, and just say, I'm looking for an internship. So you guys do internships or call. They'll pick up the phone. You know, do you guys do internships? I'm interested in the car business. Or could I come shadow from the day I'm a student at Rowan? You can just call. That's it. Don't be afraid to get yourself into an uncomfortable situation. It's the phone. They can't see you. And they're just like, wow, he's a go-getter. She's a go-getter. Oh, wow. She wants to be, you know, in beauty services. Call Raziri. They're great people. They're right in the mall. And they would say, oh, you want to be in the beauty business? Okay, come on over. They would let you shadow for a day. You can start by shadowing for a day. And then you say, you know what? I'm really interested. Find somebody that's there that you like and you have a little connection with. And you're like, hey, Susie, you know, hey, John, I really like this business. I want to learn more. What do you think? And just ask. People always want to help if you want to learn. So make that phone call. Send that email. And you know what? Listen, this is so important. If you email somebody and they don't email you back, they may be getting hundreds and it gets lost. So email them again. Write down everything you do on a pad of paper. I emailed Subaru. I emailed so-and-so. I emailed them. And the date. And then you go back a week later. If you don't hear from them, email them again. I called Subaru. They gave me the name of Human Resources. I called Susan, Human Resources. She led me to them. They're opening up internships on this date. And you, you work it, okay? So, I mean, there might, just like you would work anything, right? You know, you have to focus on it. You meet somebody you like, there's a friend, right? You want to be a better friend. You work on that relationship. You're working on these relationships with businesses. It's like a friendship that you want to develop, okay? So find one or find an industry and then find who does it. Do you, do you, is that good? Do you get it? And if you have a problem and you're like, I'm trying to reach this person, I'm stuck, don't know what to do next, you can email me and I'll help you. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. Um, you'll hang around for a little bit in case they have a, want a photo op or Instagram or something like that. That's awesome. We also have a swag bag for you from RCBC, so you have some... RCBC swag, and um, thank you all. Thank you to my students for coming. Thank you all. I know um, a few of the professors had sent this out to their classes, so thank you all. Um, also remember the Career and Experiential Learning Center is in the SSC, um, and one of the major things that I can tell you to start to do is create a handshake account. Oh, you're gonna need that as the weather person. I hope we don't get any more snow, please. <laughs> Um, if you haven't created a handshake account, please do so. That has that gives you access to all of the campus jobs and local uh, businesses that are looking uh, for employment opportunities from our students. So please, please create a handshake account. And again, if you do have an internship or the experiential learning class, it is never too late. I love that Kathy ended on that. It is never too early, sorry, to begin looking. Because uh, it does take it does take some time. So, um, grab some coffee and some snacks, and thank you all for coming. <laughs>